you. Um, can I talk through visual perception? So I'm Pete King from Linz, a uh, special developer normally by day, but love a bit of cartography. Um, here's some of my work. Um, I'm sure you recognise it's incredibly famous. Um, so my goal, I want to I want to talk about visual perceptions, how we actually see and, and Gestalt's idea of pattern finding. Um, there's lots of other aspects I could choose to focus on in terms of sort of the visual hierarchies and how your brain chooses what to focus on, which are probably more important to cartography. But this is um, less well known and it's, it's adds another toolkit into, on your belt. So this is wonderful. Um, and the, the general idea is that the more you understand, the more purposeful you can be in your decisions, more choosing what you want on there and what's not on there and realising what's getting in the way of clear communication. So this is all inspired, well, it was partially inspired by uh, some chapters in this book, The Functional Art by Alberto Cairo, which, which just had some wonderful sort of leading through all these different ways you see and how that affects sort of um, your designs and your work. So, so on to perception. Your your brain's got the this called the phobia, and uh, the centre of the retina is where all your your cones are that see see colour and give you clarity of what you're looking at. Um, and around the outside is, is more of a professional vision is this cones these grey areas. So what you're actually doing when you're seeing is you're you're taking these little snapshots as your eyes moving around to the bits that are interesting, and then joining them together, grouping them together to create what you perceive as just this the square image in front of you. Uh, and there's a little experiment you can run. Go somewhere. That you're not used to, close your eyes for a couple minutes, open them, but but keep them straight ahead and try and think about what's beside you, what colour it is, or what the shape is, and, and you just can't do it because that part of your eye is only seeing seeing in black and white, and it's, it's just such a weird feeling. Um, so so why does it? Why do we want this? And it's to do with being efficient. So we don't have to process the the, the imagery processing doesn't have to come all the way up to our thinking brain to decide what the thing is. It can just immediately do it and, and we can start grouping things and detecting things without having to think too much. So this is wonderful when it comes to say like a, a line. We can see two eyes and two ears and a mane but not much else and it doesn't have four legs so it probably shouldn't run now but but the brain would bang it's a line get out of there but also other examples of finding some food I guess and, and whatnot. Um, and the problem is that it, that it leads to these, these visual illusions where there's a triangle there. I, I can't help but see this triangle even though it's not there. So, so onto Gestalt or, or pattern or configuration sort of grouping, this idea of the, the whole is different to the sum. And it came from um, Max Wertheimer in the 1910s. He's looking at a railway crossing and, and flashing lights. He was seeing it moving around as opposed to just flashing on and off. And, and the idea at the time was that you, your brain would take the most logical route and tell you that's what it is. And, and clearly this wasn't the most logical, like he knew the light didn't pick up and move itself, something was going on. Um, and so they started to, this idea of your brain's choosing sort of the, the simplest solution or the, the, the smartest way quickly of grabbing this information for you. So so what are the benefits? So it's, it's innate. They've done some studies in cartography where they looked mm. at different people's interpretations of maps and how long they took to recognise things. Not so much of it was based on what you brought to the table, of your, your knowledge already at hand of the subject or knowledge of cartography or, or how you felt about different colours. So so having something that's, that's innate, that, that you just naturally do, that everyone does, is really powerful. It can be learned and you, you can refine it, how you detect these patterns and get better at it. But, um, but that's really good. And it's also pre-processing, the idea that it'll happen before you're even aware of it happening, you'll suddenly you'll detect it, you'll see it, you won't even have thought about it. So if, if you're if you uh, cut always so clear in communicating that it's straight away they've got it and they don't have to think about what's on the page, that's really powerful, but also a lot nicer for the person. They don't have to spend all this mental energy trying to understand this thing. So so this early perception is, is what I was talking about. If I can see a map straight away and detect what it's trying to say, then that's really, really useful. But also pattern detection. So the, a lot of the stuff I was reading about this was talking about sort of design. But it's lovely because it's just a single, a single thing to draw your focus and they can choose where to place it, but we can't. This is spatial. I can't move Wellington from here to here because it looks nice and it's easy connected as a city. It's got to stay there. So instead I've got to use something else to make these different elements of a map be grouped together to be understood as being cohesive. Um, and it's also visual hierarchy, grouping things and, and assigning them certain sort of clusters 
it's, it's another aspect of hierarchy. It's not just, just the brightness of the colours, it's, it's how we perceive these things. And, and these important things, do I know that they're related throughout the map? Um, cool, so this is kind of the body of it. I'll just go through the four key principles, kind of ideas behind it. Then we'll look at um, some of the, the main grouping principles. So there's a whole host of these different ones, but these are sort of the, the main ones people have come up with, or the ones that are most useful for us. And also figure ground. Um, and I just love that little one on the side where you, purely because of the colour, you can't help but force the line to go that way, even though you can clearly see it's going downwards. Cool, so the first is uh, emergence. So we see the whole, we perceive the whole before before the parts. And this is great for looking at a map. You see the whole thing. You don't have to go to the individual elements and then slowly build that up in your mind. So if, if you've done really well, you'll perceive what you're trying to see straight away. And the idea is that you don't see individual dots. Instead, you'll hopefully see a, a little Dalmatian there. Uh, and then in variance, they see things as constant. So it's, it's great for the colours for us. So we don't see hill shade colours messing with it. Going, oh my God. I don't know if that's forest because the green's just not quite right. It's not the right shade of green, what they've told me it'll be. Instead, we'll just see it naturally all the way through. And also this idea of moving objects. A lot of the, the examples they give of Gestalt, they have sort of a 3D object and it'll move around and change different ways you look at it. And you can still naturally see, you know, what the object is. So this is great for us. So we can move New Zealand around or we can start using clever perspectives and still recognise what we're talking about. And it was great back in the day when it was a line and I, I could tell it was a line. I didn't have to walk exactly the right way and go, yeah, there's a line and then run. Um, it's also a problem because you'll sometimes detect something and you can't let go of it. You're like, oh, that's that thing. And you know it's not right. Like, um, you know, when you, you reverse a hillshade accidentally, it's coming from the wrong angle and it's, and it's you know it's a mountain. <laughs> it's obvious it's a mountain, but you just can't let go of what you're seeing. Cool, multiple stability. This, Kind of the opposite of that, but the, the typical example is, is this goblet. Goblet and faces, we can hold multiple um, sort of views at the same time, but it's wonderful for us because you can have, if you group things right, you can jump from one grouping to the next and you can see different patterns and trends, especially for the likes of the Suyo Flora piece. We can go from one colour, one sort of pattern to another colour, another pattern, or, or maybe zoom into the buildings, the clusters of buildings of the coast, or whatever you happen to want to do. And reification. I've written the little little bits get put together as a whole. You don't see it as individual bits. So here you you automatically make the little cube there. You don't see little tiny chunks. And the other example is more to do with the, the lines. These these dots get put together as a line. You don't see it as little individual bits and have to put it into yourself. Or, or even the fill patterns. It gets sandwiched together and becomes a solid whole. It, it is a thing versus individual lines. And then I have to recognise and think about it being a whole. Cool, so, so on to, onto the grouping sort of the body of this. So I'm sure I'll put to the word, the law of pregnant. So about, about simplicity, we want it, we want, we'll see the, the most simple version of it. We won't see this weird complex shape of the slide automatically. We want to pull out the rectangle, the circle and the triangle, we can't help ourselves. This is great for us, so we can have different symbology that's kind of crossing over and mixing, but we'll, we'll pull them apart. They're simple enough objects, we'll, we'll see them as different. Um, and we want to do that because it's, it's just the quicker way of processing information in our brain. It's, it's easier, to, I think it's been safer for us in the past to, to, to make simplified ones. They haven't got it here, but it was a great example of this picture of two elephants and in the middle was a tree trunk. And so the first thought was you saw sort of two heads and two things, but you immediately, I think there was a weird complex image, you pulled it apart to two elephants. You didn't want to sort of straight away going, oh, it's an elephant with two heads. Like your brain would, would pull that and, and give you the simplest sort of explanation of what it was. But that can also get in the way of sometimes, which I guess with the flashing lights where it would feel like it was moving as opposed to flashing, because that's what we used to. This this thing changing feels like maybe it should be moving. Uh, so similarity. So this is the really obvious one for us as Katoa was because it's related to hierarchy and so much of the things we do. So the size and the color and the shape, we can automatically pick out different patterns based on these, these similarities. But also the um, the idea of being careful not to be to watch out, it's just not a real map, but the lines down the bottom, you can imagine the legends line thickness was the same size as say the contours. You, you can't help but sort of group them together. So it'll take you a little bit to pull apart and go, oh yeah, they're apart and you won't get stuck on it, you won't get confused, but that's just that little bit longer, a little bit more processing for someone that they could be spending elsewhere on the map. 
uh, proximity. So this is even more powerful than than similarity. And it's, it's how things are, how close they are. So it's great for, for labeling. Is your label close enough that it can be detected as being belonging to that point? Or is it too close to something else that you've got that confusion there and you're not too sure what's going on? Um, and, and I really like this one. Just It was mostly about the elements around the size and, and they, they're kind of grouped in, in different chunks so, so they feel like they belong together. So it's not this splattering of text. It feels, but it's also similarity. These ones down the side, they've got the same sort of little coloured dots and the same text. And suddenly the pulse of the park and the text below, it's, it's, it's got the same edge, it's sharing an edge. It feels similar, it feels cohesive. Well, it's close together. So continu continuity where you extend a pattern beyond what you see. That that square's there, but for the other one, it's not. Just something about those shapes make you think there's a square. You, you can't help but see join that together. And we see it in cut over here. I can't help but fill that in with a with a blue line there, even though the road is I, the way I've done it. I know that there's no blue line, but I can't help it. Um, so that's yeah, and that's that's also um, uh, objects on a on a curve or on, in a straight line, you automatically start grouping them together and feel like they belong together. And enclosure, this idea that little tiny elements together create this whole, and that's wonderful for us because it means you can have, you don't need to have this really cluttered or heavy map with this big thick board, instead you can just have enough little aspects that suddenly it feels like a whole, and, and so you're getting clarity. Um, Ian Rees has this wonderful, uh, might relate to this, might relate to this wonderful map he did where he just had a, a right angle corner, just the right angle lines in the, in the, the top left and bottom right, but together they, they, they were enough to create the feeling like there was a square there and join everything up. And I um, shamelessly nicked that recently, I had a map with lots of different stuff on it and it just felt sort of scattered and like things were about to fall off and as soon as I put those on it pulled everything together and it felt like a hole. Cool. Uh, symmetry, so it's just a great guide for things, but but also it's interesting when they were doing some research on sort of the lines with the double the double sort of parts to it, people were quicker to detect the pattern than they were with a single line, which sort of explains, I guess, why you see so often with our road symbology, we use this double one because you're quicker and you detect and you understand it. But also it sort of helps to explain um, sort of river labeling, where if it's following the curve and the river's got the same curve, you can't help but join them together as being related. And I, I love this example because the end of it, there's quite a lot of elements to this this little key to this map, but because they're symmetrical, you you automatically know that they're related and they're part of the whole. Cool connectedness. So they're actually joined. Have you have you got a line? Have you got this box around it? So that's you know you can join your labels to, to whatever they're talking about but also be aware of your roads and your cities will automatically join up you'll feel like they're part of the same whole and also where you don't want them to is your river too close to say a bridge and there's not enough chunk taken out of it that that you see them as separate instead they've suddenly become this weird merged feature so this this one has it you can see a couple of little boxes down the bottom here but but actually what they've got is a shared edge going along in, in those areas and that's creating the appearance of almost of there being a box without having to actually add the weight of a box onto the map and, and joins them together. Oh, or you can just actually check in the box and some nice lines if you feel that way inclined. Figure ground. So this is the last of ours. So we've done our grouping, we've done our sort of big principles. This is the last one. So a way we group is perceiving a background and a foreground. And and that's because we're we're used to a 3D. We, we live in a 3D world and that's where we evolved into. So even though we know the map's 2D, we want to turn it into 3D. We can't help but trying to do that. And the the cue that our eyes use is, is these edges. They're just it's not natural to have an edge in nature. And it sees that as being some sort of hint that there, there's a figure in a background, foreground in a background. So, so this is great for emphasizing how hierarchies bring up more important things to the top and making other things come down. So the first one, it's just there's just a foreground and a background. The actual map itself is the foreground, clearly the thing, and then the other elements sort of support it, but they've gone into the background because they're not not there. But the the next one along has a shadow, and that's I love the ones with shadows. I never really understood. Like that's obviously using this this natural wanting to make it three D. Even though it's not a shadow, we know it's not a shadow, you can't help but see the shadow as making it 3D and making that hierarchy. And I guess also these these other lovely maps you see where they've got this 
sort of white fade in the background for other for areas outside of what you're interested in is planning on um, that as as um, things taper off into sort of closing this into the background as you look out over a mountain scene, I forget the name of it, but it's playing on that where you automatically, it's not clear, it's sort of there, it's, it's clearly meant to be the background and, and using that. So not only has it made it lighter and, and less obvious, but it's also made you feel like it's in the background. And the next one with, with Australia, like clearly there's, there's Australia on top of an Australia on top of sort of a blackness. And if, if that little Australia in the corner was ooh, uh, like a, an edge, you wouldn't feel like that. You might feel like it was just sort of a boundary on top of the Australia. Is that someone drawn, one of the states just happened to be the same shape as Australia or something, you know? Well, that's very, very clear that that's on top and, and it's separate from the other parts. Cool. And so, so what are some of the cues we use for this? So one they talk about is convex. So if things are rounded, you, you, you want to put them at the front. So I guess that's also why that those little insets often they'll be circular because you, you'll see them as being a sort of a, a shape under themselves and not underneath another shape. Um, complicated often is more likely to be in front. I can't remember why that was. And then you've got symmetry and verticality. So symmetry, it's in nature objects, if they're symmetrical, they're more likely to be related, not likely to be two separate objects that have been cut up in some way. And vertical, because that's just the world we see with your trees and everything, everything tends to be vertical. So that's another way of being clear about what the before and background is. Cool. So we've got to the end. Well done. Um, so, so we've got a lot of sort of understanding of how we're grouping and how we're making a whole out of these different parts of a map. So hopefully you can be more purposeful, but also you can look at, at your own work. And if it's not quite working, maybe tease out bits that aren't working there. Oh, what am I joining up? Or, or maybe it's someone else's read your map and hasn't seen something and, and they haven't done the 50 iterations that you have so they understand that those two bits are separate. So why was it that they were connecting those two bits together? And, and you can use this to help. Um, guide you in that. Um, so there's a couple of little tips that I found. One was to don't use all the techniques at once, which fits in with some of the research I was reading where they were joining different aspects of, of that grouping together to see if they could get a more a even stronger grouping. And sometimes it would work and other times it would go completely the other way. So if you don't know exactly what's going to happen there, maybe just, just tease it apart and only use one style of grouping for the different parts. And and, and play around with it. What can you remove or, or add in terms of grouping to, to make it even more clearer? Cool. Um, that's just a bunch of the resources that I used. Some really good sort of wiki articles, but more JS wiki ones focused on it and some, some really good learning modules as well. Um, yeah. Thank you.